We all know what a skeleton is, but what are the functions of that thing? And let's remind ourselves about functions. We are talking about the role of the skeleton, or we could say what it does. That's what we're talking about. What does this thing actually do? Let me just move that like that, what it does. Okay, so let's see if we can go through some of these points and make that clear. I want to start over here, and we'll use the images to help us. The skeleton protects. Okay, so it is a form of protection. So let's be clear about this. We are talking about protection of the soft tissue of the body. So think about some examples of this. We could be talking about the old bonds, the cranium, protecting the soft tissue of the brain inside. There's actually an interesting point on that one. The, 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 of course, the cranium does protect the brain. That's literally what it's for. Um, and if we get hit with a hard rugby tackle, for example, and we fall to the ground, it could be really, really impacted. We fall off a horse in equestrian sports, very important. But don't forget as well that the brain actually bounces and hits the inside of the cranium, and that can actually be the thing that causes concussion. So it's actually an interesting little dichotomy, that one. So I'll just get you to think about that. But we've also got the ribs, the sternum, which protect the soft tissue, the heart and the lungs and the thoracic cavity. We've even got this hollow, which I'm not going to name today because it's not, it's not on our course. But this within the vertebra, you know, a single backbone or vertebrae, multiple, this protects, of course, the spinal cord. So examples here, we've got cranium that protects the brain. We've got, let's say, the ribs that protect the soft tissue of the chest. And if I just mention, in fact, let me do it this way. Let me mention it as the vertebrae, the multiple vertebra, the vertebrae, which protect, of course, the spinal cord. Let's think about our second role. We're also interested, oops, that was meant to be green. Bear with me a second. Really want this to be green. Have I got it? Yep. So here, this time, we're talking about muscle attachment. Now, the way our system works, in fact, all mammals, attachment, muscle attachment. The way that works is that we have muscles which generate force. Those, those muscles, they insert into the skeleton via tendons. So we are talking about tendon tendon insertion okay the insertion of tendons on to the skeleton itself let's give an example we've got the knee joint here let's imagine we've got a big <laughs> very big apparently quadricep muscle here and it comes down and its tendon inserts onto the tibia just there i've not drawn it very well but just there we've got tendon insertion i should have also taken that through the patella but i didn't it's a bit of rubbish drawing really but never mind we've got tendon insertion and what this does is that the the movement that we then perform as athletes as runners as sports people the skeleton anchors that movement is the anchor by which that movement can happen now of course we've also got movement in relation to joints okay so we've also got joints for movement all right so movement occurs at joints joints are what we call articulations joining points for different bones let me write that in there they are articulations okay articulations joining points here's one here's another here's another Here's another, another, and so on. We could keep going, but those articulations are the where those joints, uh, where those bones actually meet to form joints. Now, I would just mention to you that they also act these joints as the fulcrum, which is the component of the lever system. That is the pivot, and that's what joints are. So that's really important. We'll come to we'll come to levers on a different day. So I'll leave that for now. Now, one thing you might be less aware of with God's the skeleton is that we it acts as a storage of minerals, and specifically a storage of calcium, calcium, which is really important for growth uh, and and strength of things like bones and teeth and so on, and things like storage of uh, calcium and other minerals such as phosphorus, phosphorus. Phosphorus, which is really important from the perspective of muscle contraction. So with calcium, we're talking about um, the importance of strong and healthy bones. Okay, strong and healthy bones. That This fella, I don't know if the person is male or female, but this strong, healthy bone here or here or here, that's maintained by the storage and then utilization of calcium in the body. Um, calcium is also, just to be aware, we get it from dairy products like milk for a dairy dairy products such as uh, milk for example and with phosphorus guys just to be clear on the phosphorus point this one here is for muscle contraction but it's also it will reduce muscle pain okay reduce muscle pain so that could be quite important from a even from a performance perspective now let's go on to our fifth set of ideas i want to talk to you about blood cell production so i'll do this in a nice 
red to represent that blood. So we've got red RBC, my goodness me, RBC and white WBC, so red blood cell and white blood cell production. And it's worth mentioning which part of the skeleton this happens in. This happens in the bone marrow. Now, in your biology studies, you may well be learning a little bit about stem cells in that environment. You could even be learning a bit about conditions like leukemia, for example. But bone marrow inside the cavity, for example, of long bones is where red blood cells are produced. I'm also going to mention to you platelets, which are also produced in the skeleton. Now, you'll be aware probably that platelets are not quite blood cells, they are fragments of cells, but those cells are produced within the bone itself. Now finally guys, let's finish this off nice and, nice and strong. I'm gonna use a nice white for our six point up here. What is that six doing? Let's make that slightly more six-like. And we are talking here about bone growth, bone growth and development, bone growth and development. Now again, we've touched on this with regard to calcium a moment ago, but these bones grow and develop because they are formed from cartilage, okay? Formed initially from cartilage. Now it's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial to look at that exact process and how that happens. If you go on to study other courses on the website with us, you'll learn all about that. But what I do wanna to mention to you is what we will call elsewhere epiphyseal plates, but what we're gonna call here growth plates. And these growth plates are at the ends of long bones and they are the points at which growth actually occurs, okay? So these growth plates are built into these bony structures. And this is the process that we're referring to here is what we call ossification, ossification. And this is the process of bone growth. Now, I'm not gonna get into it today, but ossification and bone growth actually involves also the death of lots of bone cells and the replacement. That's actually what we mean by ossification, but we'll come to that in detail on another occasion. There we go, protection muscle attachment, joints for movement, storage of calcium and phosphorus, red and white blood cell production, bone growth and development. Thanks.